wanted to say all this, please. No. Nope. All right. Any other questions before we get going? Wish any other questions to shoot down to the professors because that's awesome. The <laughs> question on the uh, oh, second one was that. Uh, what one was that? Uh, I was not talking about it. Oh. Uh, you have a question on the second homework problem? Yeah. Okay. Come on, I want to see a sweet diagram. There's one. Oh, that is a sweet diagram. <laughs> what acceleration of the collar, and it, I assume it's in a track, can only yeah. do that? Would give a 15 degree deflection. Are you sure you write that down? That doesn't make sense. What problem is that? I also don't write down with the, uh, that's not a, a massless bar. Oh, oh man, that broke. Not that new mustard colored dog. That's not, no, that's not mustard. That's a different color. That's a different color. Yeah, that's a different color. That's not mustard. That's like, that's like, uh, that's the color of, uh, uh, those peeps. The, the, the marshmallow chickens. Like a whole oh, box of those extra Easter set that you got? Kind of is, yeah. I brought it out for Easter. You gotta admit, the, the board in the first class was awful pretty. Hey, there's the lawnmower right there. What problem is this? You got, oh, there it is, number three. Oh, I see, I see, I see what's, I got, all right, I, 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 didn't, I didn't understand. All right, so that problem is you got this collar that can ride on a, a rail and uh, there's a thing hanging from it. An arm with a little mass there, and the arm and the end there have the same mass. And then this is given some acceleration along there, which of course will cause the arm to swing back at some angle. So the question is, what is the uh, acceleration required to put that at 15 degrees? Uh, any slower, of course, will be less. Any greater, it will be more. So what would you do with it? I tried some things like summing the moments about P should equal P. Zero. Where's P? Point P is where it's oh, connected to point. Is point P is up there. Okay. I haven't gotten much farther and fell asleep in the middle of it. Does the collar have a mass too? Yeah. Uh, the, uh, I'm not sure if it's different part of the particle. It doesn't say so. Okay. Did you guys do this? What did you do with it? I tried to start yet. I figured I'd save it until the day before to do it. <laughs> I tried to, like, summon some forces on it and stuff. And I'm just, like, a little confused about it. How they all line up. So right. summing the forces in the x direction and summing the moments about point P would be, would be somewhere, but I haven't, I haven't gotten to the bottom. Alright, well, this this is, uh, remember what we were looking at on whatever it was, Monday. This is a translation problem. Um, we're looking at, at just the kinetics of translation. So, uh, what you need to look at. I guess are a couple things. That this will have the same acceleration for for all. I guess those arrows could have been the same length. All three of those must have the same acceleration, right? And. Um, Each of those has a W, uh, a weight, and so when you sum the moments about P, that didn't help any. What'd you do next? Sum the moments about P equals zero. Equals. Let's see how many those up. Well, I'm, uh, I don't know if it would make too much of a difference. I didn't split the uh, ball and the uh, arm up. I used this just like the. Uh, well, where'd you put? Yeah, that would also make it extremely difficult because I want to know where the center of mass is. 
yeah. between the, uh, the sphere at the end and that arm. But yeah. I don't know where it is on the arm it yeah. by itself and yeah. the sphere. So that, that would probably have helped. Probably have helped. Some force causing the acceleration? Yeah. yeah. diagram of each of those then yeah. that'll put some some force on that piece and some force on that okay. and it's the component of those that's causing okay. the acceleration yeah. but remember there was a a caution about summing the moments that we we I think we've just gotten to in fact we're going to hit it again today um, in some details remember what the deal with that was Parallel axis theorem. Yeah, that that if you sum the moments about the center of gravity, then it's IG alpha. If you sum the moments about somewhere else, and we'll do several problems today that highlight that, it's got to be about the moment of inertia about that same point which we don't always have, but we may have the center of, or the moment of inertia about G for regular shapes, but then we have to take into account the um, the, uh, the parallel axis theorem, which if you put that in, you'll get just that with it with the additional fact that uh, A equals R alpha. Actually, R is the same as D in these, in these cases. So uh, if you sum the moments about P and just said they were zero, you uh, didn't take into account this part because you're summing the moments about somewhere other than the center of gravity. So that one's zero, but that one's not. So try it again, see if that works. They're not due today, right? Yeah, so what are you gonna do all weekend? Just eat peeps. Okay. So uh, today we're, we're doing kind of the, uh, uh, well, we're sort of doing an extension of, of what we were doing before. Remember, what we're doing now is kinetics of rigid bodies. And Monday, we did translation. And that's what that problem was. That was a, a translation problem. There was no... Yeah, the, the bob hanging down had to rotate to that position, but then when you were to do the problem, it had already gone through that rotation, uh, and so it wasn't really a translation, or it wasn't really a rotation problem anymore. Now we're going to do rotation problems, and then next week we'll put them together and do general motion problems. And that's the type of problem of a, uh, uh, a car tire rolling or gears running along a rack or something. Those kind of problems. All right, so the idea is that we might have some rigid body here, maybe some kind of physical pendulum. A physical pendulum uh, is a, a term slightly different than the usual type of pendulums you look at in, in uh, physics class where the uh, string has no mass or negligible mass compared to the, the bob itself. Where in this case, we have an object where the uh, entire thing has some mass and so it has a center of gravity that's 
somewhere other than at the very end length of uh, the string that makes up the pendulum. So when we've got these type, type of problems we're looking, this is a pure rotation one because that's all it's doing is about some point. So uh, we might have then um, angular velocity and or angular acceleration at any one time. And because of that, we need to look at the uh, forces involved in holding it there and or uh, other things that may happen. Because of the rotation at any one second, um, it's best probably to use our normal and tangential coordinate systems. And then we can sum the moments about the pivot point, we can sum the moments about G, whatever it is we want to do as long as we uh, deal with it uh, appropriately. And we'll look at uh, both possibilities. In fact, uh, every problem we've got today, I think every problem, has alternate solutions to it so you can do it however you best see fit. So for our problems, we've then got the following kinetics equations we can use as, as necessary. That, of course, is two equations because of the two dimensions of it for our two-dimensional problems. We can sum the moment about some spot and find the angular acceleration from that, or maybe we have the angular acceleration and we want to find the forces that are causing the moments that give us that acceleration. That will be a third equation for us. Should that be about point G then? No. Remember, the, st the stipulation is that you can do it about any point as long as those two subscripts match. So one possibility is that the point you do it about is the center of gravity. So, but if it wasn't the center of gravity, you would have to use that parallel axis there. Yes. Uh, if if you if you want to sum the moments about some point other than G, and you don't have this, then you have to use the parallel axis theorem, which then gives you the alternate form. Ig alpha plus m a g d, where the d is the distance between those two axes. Actually, just in a two-dimensional problem, uh, just the distance between those two points, the, the minimum distance between those two points. So either way, uh, that's one more equation. And in terms of the kinetics, that's all we've got. So after that, you have to use the kinematic equation if you need more equations. And the kinematics equations are the uh, uh, acceleration type equation that we just had a little bit ago. Oh, sorry. Not that one. That one was on the other side. And let's make it with respect to G. Uh, I guess we can can label this some point P. Actually, it could be, again, any point that we've got. Uh, no, that would have to be P there. We have our relative acceleration equation. But the acceleration of point P being the pivot point is zero. So our relative uh, relative acceleration then becomes uh, what we've had before, R alpha 
in the tangential direction and uh, r omega squared in the normal direction. So those, those equations are possibility or possible equations and then if need be even uh, even the, uh, uh, the velocity relationship between them. And that would be only in the tangential direction because we don't have in rotation or motion any, any velocity of any point other than tangential. So that bit there is kind of a reminder. Yeah, these, these, these colors are awesome for the Easter. You're just getting in the mood, aren't you? Explain that last part. Velocity of G is just RW. It's in the tangential direction only. Yeah, where R is the, the distance from the pivot out to uh, the center of gravity. I guess we could call it RG if you want. And then um, times the angular motion itself. So, uh, for the picture shown, it ha I happen to pick that it's rotating that way. So at that instant, its velocity is that, and it's related to the angular acceleration. I'm sorry, angular velocity in that way. All right, so let's do a problem here, kind of like that one. Imagine a slender rod pivoted about one end. At the instant it's in the horizontal position, there's a moment applied to it. We'll call that end where it's pinned uh, uh, point A. And that moment is 60 Newton meters. Also at that moment, it happens to have an angular velocity of 5 radians per second. I love these colors. I think I, I'm just going to stop talking and just draw. It's so pretty. And the uh, uh, length of it is three meters and its mass <coughs> is 20 kilograms. And we want to find two things. The angular acceleration it will have at that instant that that moment is applied as it passes horizontal and the reactions at uh, that pin that's holding it to the wall. And then the arrow, the, uh, the, blue, the blue arrow is a moment. angular acceleration. Oh. No, an applied moment that will cause an angular acceleration. All right, we're going to have three solutions for this. All of them give the same answer, thank God. You pick which one you like the best and study only that one then, but I'll, we'll do all three. All right, free body diagram. Let's see. Uh, of course, it's got some weight there. It's got some A there. Uh, since it's rotation, we'll use the I don't want to draw that there because I'm going to need that spot. Uh, well, I guess I don't want this drawing, but we'll put it here like this. That, that will be the normal direction. That's the tangential direction. Since it's accelerating in that, remember, normal and tangential coordinate systems are defined at the instant uh, by the motion itself. So, so we've got that. And then there's 
some component of the force over here we need to find. So that's tangential direction. That's the normal direction, right? And then uh, in terms of the load, we also have that applied moment. So that's the free body diagram. I think we got all the pieces. Anything missing? Any forces missing? No, we got the, the reaction, the weight, and the moment being applied. So. Why is the uh, <coughs> reaction force pointing that way to the opposite direction? Just because that puts it in the positive normal direction. Uh, if, 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 if we're wrong, when we solve for it, we'll get a minus. So we're not too worried. Now, it helps in these problems, especially with the general problems coming up, if you also draw a kinetic diagram, which is the motion that will result from those forces being applied. Remember, in this class, the uh, forces don't sum to zero. So we're going to have some angular acceleration alpha that we're looking for. And there will be some acceleration of the center of gravity in a tangential direction. and an acceleration in the normal direction. So that's our kinetic diagram. It helps at times to make sure we've got those because when you have to do that, that M-A-G-D part it will really help if uh, at times you've got that actually written down because you've got to know what that D is. In fact, you've got to recognize that it's even there. So we can sum the forces in, uh, well, we got to do it in all directions, I guess. Well, we got three unknowns, so we're going to need three equations. So uh, let's see, tangential direction. down is positive. And if those forces are unbalanced, that will cause an acceleration in the tangential direction. But the notation I want to use. Well, we can go ahead and put in a T there. We'll fix it in a second. So what forces do we have in the tangential direction? Uh, positives down for the tangential direction because that's the way it's accelerating at the moment. So what do we got? W minus A tangential. We know W. I don't actually have it calculated, but we know M, so we don't consider that an unknown. We have W. So then that equals the acceleration, which will be m times r times alpha, because it's the acceleration of the center of mass, <coughs> where r will take just to be uh, the half distance there. Right, that'll be the tangential acceleration of the center of mass. This 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 part right here. Why is it minus a t? Because w's down and I drew a t up, and that's oh. my arbitrarily chosen well not ar semi arbitrarily chosen positive direction. Do you need some more colors? I can go get green. All right, uh, 
and do the same thing in the normal direction to get the normal acceleration and that's our positive direction there so just to remind ourselves so what do we have uh, an but it's in the positive direction so it doesn't need a minus sign and uh, that's that's it equals M uh, A G, which is um, R omega squared. Oh, in fact, we've got all those pieces, don't we? Because we know all those numbers. So we can put part of this problem to bed. Five radians per second. I think that equals 750. So wait, there is so we have 25 to 750. Sorry? That's a reaction. So that's that's the reaction at N and it's uh, it's positive. We always have to T, T cross, and okay, so let's let's add that as also as our positive direction. What? Now we always have to do that with the uh, the, um, the weight, R, MR, the B squared. What weight? Here? Oh, that's, that's my mind, that's it, sorry. All right, so we still have two unknowns, a, t, and alpha, so we're going to need another equation that relates those. And um, so we'll sum the moments. About, what did I want to do for my first choice here? We'll do it about g. Where then again... That's our positive direction. Yeah. All right. So we sum the moments about G. That's M A. It's not strictly about G itself, but remember, the moment is a floating vector. As long as you don't change the direction, its location is the same for anywhere along the rigid body. Alex, did you have another hand up? Or same uh, hands? If you do some moments about G, is what we're given the moments about N. But I see where it down. Yeah, that's an applied moment. Remember there, G's at the center there. But moments, moments, uh, uh, if you have the moment, the moment applies anywhere for the whole piece. It's a floating vector, whereas forces are sliding vectors. I can't take the weight and put it anywhere I want without changing the problem. But I could draw it pushing instead of pulling, and there's no difference in the problem. So force vectors can slide along their length, but moment vectors can float anywhere you need them. Not anywhere you need them, but anywhere. So uh, the neck, the, these two forces cause no moment because they go through point A. So only have W causing any moment. W R. And that's going to cause the object to accelerate. What is, uh, what's IG? Remember, there's five ways to handle 
moment of inertia. This one I can probably find the appendix. Find what? Looks like In the a appendix? A In the appendix. <laughs> yeah, that's ID for a slender rod is 112 ml squared. Where did the WR come from again? That's the moment caused by the weight about point, oh sorry, not about point G. Yeah, we're doing the moment about G, so actually we want AT. Sorry about that, we want ATR. Should be minus then? Uh, about G, uh, AT is going uh, counterclockwise, that's our positive, chosen positive direction. So no, it's, it's a plus. All right, so. Uh, that comes out to be 15 kilogram meters seconds. So we've got two unknowns again because MA is known. That's the applied moment. AT we don't know. R is 1.5 meters. It's the moment arm on AT. And IG is 15 and alpha is unknown so we have two equations now two unknowns do I have some of the other numbers for that equation yeah the weight is 196 newtons minus a t at M times R is 30. 30, what would that be? Uh, meter, kilogram, meter squared. So we have two equations, two unknowns, and now we can solve it get the last little pieces, All right? Because we already have that. So to skip the algebra, I'll give it to you. AT is 19 newtons and alpha 11.3 radians per second squared. Oh, sorry, not 11.3, 5.9. So that's our three, three things to find. Okay, nothing too tricky there, I don't think. I hope. But there's new stuff. You know what? Well, new. There are things to pay attention to. We've got to be very careful with the directions. So specify that and set them down and stick to it. Remember that moments are floating vectors. So even though that's a moment about A, it's a moment for the entire rigid body. All right. So I told you three solutions. Three ways to solve the same problem. There's one of them. So the alternate solution. You got all this? I thought I saw something right now. Alex, you got it all? Okay, so the alternate solution. And it doesn't matter which, you can use whichever one makes you more comfortable. 
Uh, we sum the moments about G, but we could sum the moments about A. So let's see what that does for us. Uh, let's see, we've still got MA there. What else? Plus WR. Now the weight is causing a moment, WR. MGR, if you wish. MG's uh, 196 newtons in this case. No other moments, since the two reaction forces go through point A, and that will equal IA alpha. If we know the moment of inertia with respect to point A, five possible ways to handle the moment of inertia. Look it up. You're given it. You don't need it. You can calculate it. What was the fifth? Oh, you get the radius of gyration. Is the fifth. I want to see how you would calculate it. Not okay. An example like that. Okay. I would calculate it by looking in the book. Was it in there? It's probably in there. Yeah. So, I'm, oh, do you want me to do the integral? Forget it. I'm as bad at you as those as you are. So, is there? Well, there is. Is there the moment of inertia for a slender rod? Not about its center of gravity, but about one end. So, if you've got your book here, pull it open. Inside the back cover part way. There you guys go. Oh, better cuddle up with somebody, Bob. Is it there? If it's there, we're okay. Otherwise, well, no, I, I, we could calculate it without uh, without doing. Uh... Okay, Alex, we'll calculate it. Alex wants to calculate it. I just want to see at least one example. I'm, I'm okay. Kind of okay. Ig plus md squared. That's the uh, parallel axis theorem. What's the moment of inertia through the center? Well, we just had that. That's the 112 ml squared. Ah, but what if it was a problem where you don't know that either? Then calculate it. ml squared. It's confusing me here. What's confusing you? If we don't have some sort of body that is in one of these shapes. Okay. I G equals R squared B M. And you'd have to do this uh, by linear, by uh, you'd have to know the linear weight of this to replace that mass. So if this has some linear Way you know of uh, uh, something like newtons per well actually we want kilograms kilograms per foot what would we call that I have to give it some symbol uh, well I guess we'll put rho it's kind of like density it's like the linear density so the mass is um, this is the x direction. So this is x squared, where r is the distance from there, um, times 
the length times whatever that is. Dx. And then you integrate that from 0 to L over 2 and then multiply it by 2 because uh, you're doing it from the center. All right. I think that's it. Or, since some good Samaritan already did that for us, we look it up, apply the parallel axis theorem, md squared d is the distance between those two, which is L over 2, and so that's squared, that's L over 4, and that becomes then one third ML squared. Notice that's what's in the book for uh, an axis. I think they call it Y prime. Is that right, Jake? It's in that, that picture there? Yeah. Um, were you saying that the the length that you use is just from the edge to the center? No, L is the entire length of the, okay, okay, yeah. the object. And that's why this is L over 2 squared, because that's what D is. Half of, half of L. Alright, so we got all the pieces back here. Mg is 196 newtons. R is again 1.5 meters. Uh, that comes out to be 60. 60 kilogram meters squared for IA. And then alpha is the only unknown we have. We can solve for it directly. should get the same thing. You still have to solve for AT, uh, but you can do that with the sum of the forces now that you know what alpha is. So I don't need to do that again. That's exactly the same way. So maybe you find that a little bit easier than summing the moments about G. Actually, I had a third solution, but it's already up there, really. The first solution was to the first alternate solution was to just look in the book. The second alternate solution was to use the parallel axis theorem and uh, do that. But we already did it. Because it's, uh, there's, there's nothing left to do with it. Well, I guess it's a little bit different. Comes out to be the same. So that would be the alternate, alternate solution. But you can argue whether or not you see those as different. See, Alex? Like that's what you do when your cell phone goes off. Um, the only trick here, I guess, is that we have to realize that AG is our alpha. 
R is the same as D, so this comes out to be exactly the same thing that we had there. So we really have sort of already done the alternate solution. Questions on that one? A couple things to watch out for. Pay attention to uh, a positive direction that you've chosen. And uh, just pay attention to where you, where you know or where you don't know the center of gravity. Any questions? You guys look like you can need you need a good at, a get out of class question. Do you? Even if it might take an hour and a half, it's worth the chance. Too bad you didn't get it all done before Jake came back. All right, let's see. This one also has an alternate solution, but only one. So uh, I can set it up and then you can choose whichever one you want. So imagine a pulley of radius 0.4 meters. <coughs> mass 60 kilograms and radius of gyration which sounds like a really cool dance if you ask me 0.25 is that right? Yeah, 0.25 meters now this is the idea that if that 60 kilograms was placed a quarter of a meter away from the center that these two objects, this, the original pulley, and the one that represents the radius of gyration would have the same moment of inertia. Alright, then hanging from there is a block of 20 kilograms. So let's make this mass of the pulley, mass of the block, 20 kilograms. Release from rest, find the angular acceleration. That's the radius of gyration. If see we have a we have a drum there with a radius of four tenths of a meter, sixty kilograms, that gives it a certain moment of inertia. If we took that sixty kilograms, put it instead at point two, put the whole sixty mil kilograms at point two five meters which of course is an impossibility to put all that mass at a single distance. But if we did, the two would have then the same moment of inertia. That's the definition of the radius of gyration. We can't calculate the moment of inertia directly because we're not sure how the, weight, the mass is distributed in that drum. Might have a heavy rim, might have uh, it's got some mass on the end here. Uh, we do have the radius of the moment of inertia for a cylinder, but a cylinder doesn't have some of its mass as caps at the end. Jake, did you have a question? No. Okay. All right. 
two ways to look at this problem. One is look at it as two separate items and draw a free body diagram of each. Don't forget that the pulley has its own weight. So the free body diagram would look something like that. And obviously the torque is going to apply, or the, the force is going to apply some moment causing some angular acceleration that we want to find. And then to go with that is the fact that the mass of the block itself will accelerate itself. So, how many unknowns? Obviously, alpha is, because that's what we're trying to find. We don't know the true reaction forces, but we weren't asked to find those. May have to, but might not have to, if we can skip it, great. We don't know the tension. Um, we don't know the acceleration of the block. So, that's one, two, three, four, five unknowns. Don't know alpha, T, the two reaction components, and the acceleration of the block. So we're going to need five equations. A little luck, maybe it can happen in less than that, but we're going to need five, I guess. Another way to look at it, and it may not be as obvious how to do it, um, is to take the whole thing as a single system. Don't separate the weight. That way the tension is not an unknown, but everything else remains an unknown. So it's kind of uh, six one and a half dozen of another. What you want to do with it. One less unknown. So there you go. There's your get out of class question. If you can do it in 20 minutes, you're that much closer to Easter. somewhere else now because it's two masses taken together, but you can sum the moments about the center. And still get the pieces. That one's a little trickier though, I think. Yeah, the reason that's trickier is because only the block has any acceleration. So 
um, that's the acceleration that goes in there, not the acceleration of the center of gravity itself. That's why that one's a little bit trickier. It's not quite as obvious. How do we tie in the uh, what's it called the radius of gyration? The radius of gyration is defined as the moment of inertia, square root of the moment of inertia over the mass. And uh, radius gyration can be about different points as well. So that that's the kind of thing that would apply if you had an eccentric cam or something where the, the point of rotation is not at the same point where the center of gravity is for the object. So, come on, for the block being the only one that accelerates, you just use the mass of that block, or use the mass of the whole system? Well, the, the, the acceleration of the pulley is zero. Only the block has any acceleration, uh, the linear acceleration. The angular acceleration is not zero, no. Yeah, but I mean, when I'm uh, some of the force over there, some of the moments, uh -huh. that, that MAD term, whatever, yep. uh, MB, you know, the mass of the Oh, yeah, that'd be the mass of the, the block as well. Because that's the, the piece doing that accelerating. So, wait, just the block? Yep. All right. Because the acceleration of the pulley is zero. So we, we, if, if we had two things accelerating, we'd need both of those, those pieces in there. The good thing about the two methods is IG and IA are the same thing. turns out that if you write these equations, eliminate T, you get this solution anyway because that's essentially what you've done for that drawing. Frank, you got it yet? No? So for the values in the background, you No. You need this for a moment of inertia. slipping and so that eliminates one of the unknowns by putting them together and it works for both of them. center of gravity, though, is of the only one that has any acceleration, which is the block. The block's the only one with any linear acceleration. This is like a, an angular momentum term, sort of. And that's at a distance r. So r alpha equals a b, which is that same substitution from over there. And D is also R. I'm not saying that. Why is why is D R? Because here's this 
point where you're summing this, the moments, and here's the acceleration at a distance r away, which is what d means. It's the distance the acceleration is from the center that you're summing. And that's r. I thought it was the distance between the center of gravity and the point no. you're summing the moments of r. And this acceleration. All right. Okay, Jake? We don't know the weight for the mass of black, right? Yeah, 20, 20 kilograms. <laughs> Is there like a conversion from angular acceleration to acceleration? I just forget what it is. So like that. Oh. that won't do? Just amazing, yeah. That's, again, assuming that the rope doesn't slip. Also, of course, we're assuming that the rope is massless. Is there no negative value? <clears throat> what? Is there no negative value? No. Other than it starts from rest. But, uh, uh, that doesn't really matter. It would have the same acceleration. Once you let go of it, it has constant acceleration. No, omega is zero at the start, but after that, no, it's not. But it doesn't apply here. Where would omega apply? The only place omega applies is on the centripetal acceleration term. And that only applies, I guess, to the rope as it unwinds or the rim of or, or certain parts of the uh, drum, and it just doesn't uh, doesn't come into any of these equations. Yeah. Excellent. You may go. I'm at Easter. No, so you can stay and hope you get out of here by Memorial Day. Nope. Good job, Alex. Oh, man. Which one? Which way did you do it? Which way do you mean? Did you do it with these two as separate? Or with this as a single system? No, I don't. I didn't do it separately. Oh. Algebraically, when you eliminate T, you get this solution anyway. Threaten to take his shoe box full of money. Frank. My black guy's like, oh my god. You're always going to ask more questions. Nope. Let's get back. I'm going to go to this main road cleanup that starts in five minutes. Cleanup of what? Main road. Main road cleanup. Yeah? We should have thrown stuff out coming in. Because <laughs> I, I like to contribute to student activities. Is that a is that a fundraiser for Max or a service thing? Oh, uh, no, it's just, something is the it, college has you were, every semester. Oh, it's not something you have to do for the sheriff county. Well, the club is required to do it. The county sheriff, I mean. No, I would, yeah, I wish. You wish? Yeah. Well, it's such a such a small Rabble board. rapture. That's you, all right. There's a <laughs> word for you. Right there. All right. Will you I check my answers? Sure, I will. Nope. Higher goals. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. Kind of hot. Kind of cold. All right, let's do it so I can hear you guys. All right, some of the moments about A. Let's see, that would be, uh, well, here, let me write it down so we know where we're going. Mass of the block. Acceleration of the block. D. All right, 
Some of the moments about A, the only force that doesn't go through A is the weight. So that's WVR. Sounds like a radio station. Equals IA, the moment of inertia of the drum. The block doesn't count because it's not uh, turning. Is uh, this, this piece here. Mass of the pulley. Plus M of the block times its acceleration, which is R alpha, times D, which is R again. So it's R squared alpha. And you should be able to solve for alpha right there. To do that, Work for me. Man, that's like a huge Easter gift. That is. Because you, you, you can do that in two minutes, get out of our class five minutes early. Why is this? Because A is R alpha, and then D is another R, making it R squared. you would have caught that. Don't get mad at me. You could have caught that. You are? For me? That ship already sailed. Sorry. Come on, quick. You can still get it done and get out early. Come on, type faster. Switch them. That's right. This is just this is just in translation where the moment of inertia doesn't matter. Could you use that K value to like get the IG out of that? Yeah, you have to. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's this right here. 
Okay, that's what I thought. And that's why, uh, that's why I already put it in. Okay, just go. All right, you too. <coughs> Eleven point three. We'll change your units, then it becomes eleven point three appropriate units. Uh, yeah. There it is. No. What is Frank, that's right. Uh, I mean, sorry, Pat, that's right. Yeah, that oh, works. Yeah, no, I got that right. So yeah, that works eleven point three. Plus, your clue was, if you remember, for the first problem, I accidentally wrote down eleven point three for alpha, and it was 